The Cygnus cargo ship now attached to the Earth-facing side of the International Space Station's Harmony module is due to be removed from that spot and sent on its way next week, wrapping up a mission that delivered over 7,500 pounds of cargo and small satellites when it arrived in late March. This ship will not only be hauling things off uh, no longer needed on the station, it will also host some science on its way down to a destructive re-entry into the atmosphere. And joining us this morning to talk about uh, some of those things coming up is Holly Vavrin, the International Space Station uh, Program's flight lead of the Cygnus mission. Thank you, Holly, for being here. Happy to be here. All right, so tell me, um, would you say this mission has gone pretty much according to plan so far? It's been essentially flawless. All of the Cygnus subsystems have performed not perform nominally. This is the second flight of the enhanced uh, Cygnus spacecraft. And so with the changes that have been made incrementally over time, it just really proves how reliable the spacecraft design is. We're, we're really happy with the performance. So it's going to be taking about uh, 4,400 pounds of, of trash and other things uh, away from station. What kinds of trash is it going to be taking away? Well, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Cygnus undergoes a destructive reentry. That means it burns up in the atmosphere. And so that's a really effective way of getting rid of trash and broken or obsolete hardware that we no longer need on station. And so we've got, as I mentioned, some, some hardware, broken hardware, um, obsolete hardware, we have dirty laundry, um, food canisters, and of course, smelly waste items. Um, so we're basically a big garbage truck, but it's a very important aspect uh, to supporting station operations. It's better than keeping it on the station Absolutely. For, for six months. Um, so on its way down, it's not only carrying trash, it's carrying some experiments. It's going to be deploying some satellites and uh, play host to what's described as, I guess, a large fire. So tell me about these events and how you're going to get the data from the fire experiment, Sapphire. Okay, uh, so on Tuesday the 14th, uh, Cygnus will depart uh, from Space Station and about four hours after departure, we'll begin the SAFIRE operations. That is the spacecraft fire experiment that is run out of the Glenn Research Center. And so the goal is to understand how fire propagates without the effects of gravity. So we're gonna answer questions like how large does a fire get? How fast does it spread? And this information will help us improve future spacecraft designs, especially for long duration missions. There have been previous combustion experiments uh, performed in space and on, a, on the space station, but those experiments have been limited to samples that are four inches square or less. So an unmanned cargo craft like Cygnus is ideal for large scale combustion experiments without posing any risk to ISS or crew. So in Cygnus, there's a one foot by three foot material sample, it's a cotton fiberglass blend located inside a specially built uh, enclosure that's inside the pressurized section of Cygnus. And so after departure, the orbital ATK flight controllers from their Dulles facility, Dulles, Virginia facility, uh, will remotely ignite the sample. We're going to get a lot of data uh, from sensors that are placed throughout the vehicle and um, high def video. That's what we're most excited to see, how the fire behaves in space. That'll be downlinked via ground station over the next uh, few days uh, so researchers can study it. Awesome. Uh, in addition, there will be uh, some CubeSat deployments. This is the first use of the NanoRacks CubeSat deployer to deploy small satellites from Cygnus. Historically, we've used the Japanese airlock on station to deploy satellites, but now we have the ability to deploy uh, from a free-flying vehicle. So there are five Spire Lemur satellites on this vehicle. They've got technology demonstrations and maritime and weather observation platforms, and those will be deployed on Wednesday morning. And those cubes has the weather operations for uh, ships and, and boats, correct? Uh, yes, right? monitoring, yes. Excellent. So uh, those are the two experiments. We have uh, Sapphire, we have some of the CubeSats. We also have the uh, Reber, the destructive reentry is going to be uh, it's going to be looking at some of that that data uh, so tell me what would be measured and what's the value of knowing the specifics of how the vehicle is destroyed on reentry okay so on June 22nd uh, Cygnus will begin its fiery demise and so the reentry breakup recorder is a payload that was designed by the aerospace corporation and flown under the direction of the DoD space test program and that payload will record temperature and acoustic measurements from inside the spacecraft this data is collected, sent to a mother unit also inside the vehicle, and then as the Cygnus vehicle is breaking up, the uh, Reber unit makes a satellite phone call through the Iridium network to transmit that data to researchers on the ground. And the data that we're obtaining is really crucial to understanding how spacecraft 
behave during reentry, and this will, will allow us to improve future spacecraft designs. Excellent. So we have all of these experiments, and then it departs on June 14th, and then uh, begins its destructive reentry eight days later on June 22nd. After that, are there more Cygnus cargo ships on the agenda for this year? Absolutely. Teams are busy. Uh, the OA-5 mission is coming up. That'll be the Antares launch vehicle return to flight. Uh, orbital ATK recently completed a very important milestone leading up to that to that launch. It was a hot fire test of the first stage. Got a picture up, looks like, of, of how that went. Uh, very successful. Uh, specialists will be reviewing data over the next couple of weeks. Um, but in the meantime, the Cygnus vehicle for the OA-5 mission is at the launch site, and we're very much looking forward to launching from the Wallops Flight Facility. Uh, in addition, uh, there's another uh, orbital ATK mission planned for later this year called OA-7, and preparation is, is underway for that mission as well. Plenty of cargo going up and down. We're very excited for the return to flight and, and all. Uh, Holly, thank you for being with us today. Again, the on uh, on June 14th, the Cygnus cargo vehicle is going to be departing uh, from the station, and we'll pr be providing some NASA TV coverage uh, starting at 8 a.m. Central Time, uh, 8, and uh, it'll depart at uh, 8.30 a.m. Central Time. So, again, Holly, thanks for being with us today. My pleasure. Uh, great, great. Best of luck to you. Go Cygnus. <laughs>